Come on. This is where you need to be at. You need to be out here in this water out here, in this green, green water out here. You want to get you some more money. You got to sit out here and rinse yourself off. Ask God to forgive you for any sins you have done in the past. Move forward. Move forward. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in the past. The past will never, never come back. Move forward to the future. Ask God to forgive you. Move forward. That's what I do. I get rid of all, anything that I don't need to help me move forward. I get in this water twice a year. Ask God to forgive me. Won't you try it? This is my key to success. This is why I keep building stronger and stronger and stronger. I really don't care who believes. I really don't care who the daughters is. I know what works for me. If you're scared, don't come around me. Please don't. It does no good. I just want a winner. All winners around me. Greetings. I am Legacy Moon, and this is True Crime and Mysteries. Welcome back to all my current subscribers. Welcome to those of you who've been here before and you're checking me out again. And welcome to those who are here for the very first time. Let's talk about poor little lonely looking Nesto. Then he looked lonely on the phone saying, hello, 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 hello. But anywho, um, I was just coming to let you know a few things. Uh, number one, Pam, the law intellect, went live today, you know, around lunchtime, you know, with a little bit of light light, you know, nothing serious. I think maybe she was on almost 30 minutes. But what she was basically letting us know is that Will Wooten followed, f followed, filed a motion and he's asking for recidivist punishment for Mr. Ernest Williams. That means that because he is a repeat felon, he is looking to get him like a substantial amount of time. I mean, to me, it almost sounded like, you know, that three strikes rule, you know, three times and you're out and they put you away for life. That's what it kind of was sounding like to me. But if you want to get her professional explanation, you can go on over there and get that. And I was trying to um, write down, you know, the years of his, you know, the, his different felony charges and stuff. But, you know, numbers, I get nervous when you start calling out numbers. I don't know what that, what it is, but I just get nervous. So I didn't want to mess any dates up. So I only wrote down a few. So he's had, we all know, some theft by taking charges in the past. He had one in, in 89, and he had one in 91, and I think he had another one. And then there was that robbery in 2006, something in 2005. I didn't even catch what that was. And um, what, what I thought was interesting is that I know I have heard about, <clears throat> um, excuse my voice, y'all, I'm sorry. I know I had heard about his witness intimidation charges that he had had or been convicted of, or maybe not, maybe they were no pros, but she didn't mention those. And I, I just found that, that interesting. So I don't know if she didn't mention them because they, it wasn't a felony or not. And that's pretty much it. She went over what the codes were, and whatnot. So, you know, like I said, if you want to hear what she said, you can, you know, go on over there to Pam the Law Intellect. Now, <laughs> now let's get into some meats and potatoes. <clears throat> the, the prayer bishop over there, she had a visit with Nesto on the 19th. So that would have been before these charges, but after the divorce. So one of the first thing, wait a minute, let me stop there. I thought that these meetings with um, Nesto was for Bible study and prayer. I thought that's, I thought we wasn't going to discuss the case or anything like that. It was for, you know, Bible study and prayers. Well, this meeting didn't seem to be going like that. She sits down and was asking him how he feels about everything and, 
you know, he's talking, but it sounded like they were both having two different conversations, which really isn't that far fetched with Nesto, because sometimes it seems like that way, no matter who he's talking to. But as it turns out, when she tells him about the divorce, he didn't know anything about it. He did not know Shirley has filed. He did not know um, that he had a court date coming up next month. He didn't know any of those things. And um, I found I, I just find that interesting. And if he if he hadn't been told by her, he probably would have found out like within the next couple of days anyway, because, you know, that's part of the RICO, his um, bigamy. It's part of the RICO. So, you know, he would have found out some at some point this week. But she broke it to him. And, and I wonder, does she do that visit so she can go and bring that up or what? Because I watched most of the visit. I just stopped toward it because to me, they weren't talking about they weren't talking about and doing the usual things that they usually do. And then, you know, I'm getting so sick of this victim mentality. And what I mean by that is, you know, Nesto's a victim. Everybody's lying on him. Everybody, his daughters, these other ladies, everybody's lying. Um, and then uh, the blogger, she's trying to be a victim. Uh, YouTube, everybody's picking on her. Um, they're teasing her and all because she decided not to be in with the in crowd anymore. You know, I guess she kicked, I guess instead of um, the popular kids not wanting to eat with her, she don't want to eat with the popular kids. So she's going to go and create her own group. I mean, I, that's the only, the best way I could give an example of that, of how what she was saying was given. So um, I just that that kind of really got on my nerves. I couldn't take too much more of it. And when it got toward the end, I, I just said, you know, this this is enough, because when she asked him, Chow, wait a minute. She had asked him, what does he think about people on the YouTube street saying that what is happening to him now with the with with the divorce and all that's going on is his karma? How does he feel about that? First of all, that's just a dumb question. Why would why would if you don't want to be doing with with Every other blogger on YouTube is doing who's reporting on this story. If you don't want to be a part of that, then stop bringing it up. People are messing with you because you seem to be messing with everybody. Stop bringing it up. So his response to that was that he doesn't believe in karma. That's a Chinese thing. Well, Nesto, once again, you're wrong. It is not a Chinese thing. It's actually a Hindu thing. It's a part of Hinduism. Those are the Indians over there in India. That, that's what that is. It has nothing to do with the Chinese people. So that was his, was his response to that. And then <laughs> he knows that he is going to be set free. He knows that, you know, he's just, God is putting him through something. And that, you know, in the end, he's going to be victorious. Now, he didn't use that word, but that's what he was meaning to say. Um, so yeah, that, that was about how that went before I just had to zone out. I just, it was just too much. But one thing that he said that struck me as very strange, he said he, he almost left this world twice. He seen the devil twice and he seen God once. I don't know if that's, a good, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But nevertheless, you know, they were both just playing victim to each other, you know, like, oh, this is happening to me. But, you know, I know God's got me and God has put me through all of the things that I've gone through because that's what he does. He breaks you down and then builds you up. They didn't teach me that in Bible study or or vacation Bible school. I never taught it to the children when I taught Sunday school. I never taught that that way. So. But yeah, that's what she was saying. You know, they're all, yeah, 
Anyway, then, now, I'm just going to give you a snippet. I'm not going to go into it. I might come back and report on it later. By the time Sonia sees him, I, I, let me see, did I write the date down? Um, maybe the next day Sonia saw him. I don't know. But um, if it wasn't the next day after Sylvia, it was the, the day after that day. And by then he's, he's fighting mad. He's mad because Sylvia has now told him about this divorce that he knows nothing about. And he is just, I mean, he was just fuming. And he doesn't understand how she could say they haven't been together since uh, 2022 because of where they was living. But, dude, you was in jail for a few days before she even knew where you were. So, I mean, if I have to pick a side, it's going to be hers because... You were never at home. So, I mean, I can believe that y'all weren't together. Now, I don't know if that not together was in a biblical sense or what. But, um, yeah. And, you know, he was just, he reminded me, I don't know if you've ever seen anyone who who's bipolar and they're going through mania. That's what I, that's what watching that them two together, Sonia and him together was like uh, watching someone who's bipolar going through mania. He's just spouting off stuff and just going and talking and saying things and saying things. And she's eating it up, you know, like pretty much like, yeah, yeah, you talk your talk, get it out, talk your talk. I'm like, these two are, they are insane. They're both Bat shit crazy. And they both need to sit down somewhere. All three of them need to sit down somewhere. So now I might <laughs> I might try to look at that interview. I'm not the interview, I'm sorry, the visit that he and Sonia did that's on that lady's channel. I might have to look at it again and give you a better report. But I just oh I just couldn't take it. I couldn't. So I think that that is it. Let me look through my notes. This is bad that I have to start taking notes. Oh, but one thing I did catch is when um, his prayer partner was there, they were talking about, um, he's, he was talking about, you know, remember when you first said you wanted to come see me and I asked you why? Well, all of this started back in January. So... I don't know if we had a pinpoint day as to when they had been talk when they started talking, but we know they started talking in January. So that leaves her and Sonia um, hooking up and doing whatever it is that they were doing. That leaves that to be about November, December, from what I could come up with. So that that's pretty much it. That's that's pretty much all I can give you on that. I mean, I know I know I zipped through this, but I I'm telling you, you have got to see that interview. It was just like between her twitching and him just like he's in a manic state suffering from mania. It's like it's depleted my energy. So I'll try to come back with that. And I am working on another, um, you know how I do my little videos with where I take a piece of something and put it together with something else from a phone call. Well, I think I found two other things that I wanna, I'm want i going to try to work on. I probably won't get to it until tomorrow, but I am working on something. So there you have it. 